The Story of the Christmas Truce, 1914. For many, it remains one of the most enduring and symbolic moments of World War I. The events of December 1914 become part of an integral part of the national remembrance of the wider centerpiece of the current First World War celebrations. The truce itself become the most innocent event of the entire war. Short of div- div- derivative evidence, many now suggest the real truth behind the other events, rather different and often mundane. Then m- w- that many would be- believe today. It's a common misconception the war stood still on the entire front on Christmas Day 1914. This is incorrect. This official casualty statistics and over the period reveal. On the 25th of December 1914, almost 100 British soldiers would lose their lives in France and Flanders, with another 62 dying over the following 24 hours. This total, while significantly lower than a normal daily additional average, reveals the truce was not observed on all sectors. Furthermore, many veterans were later to dismiss suggestions the truce occurred at all adamant that it would not have taken place in the war and really have been sickening losses on both sides. Those who were not involved in or did not bear witness to those incredible events is entirely understandable. They would be sceptical of many reports of federation that would soon emerge. Elsewhere, however, it is clear that extraordinary events did unfold during the first Christmas of the Great War. Recent estimates suggest some of the temporary truce Federation took place at least two thirds of the front held by British troops, which was subsequently well documented by both official British and German sources. There was also prefer- uh, the personal accounts and diary produced that told of soldiers exchanging, exchanging souvenirs, photographs, food, and drink on no man's land on Christmas Day 1914. Many men spoke of their experiences in letters written after the truce. With a significant number of these accounts later published by newspapers and journals, the events described were so incredible that those at home would scarcely believe them. One account was written by former Aston Villa at Wolverhampton Wanderers inside forward Herbert Smart, was serving a gunner at the Royal Artillery. I went out myself on Christmas Day and exchanged some cigarettes for cigars. German and met a bit of weight in London. I could use, I could use language a little. He says he did not want to fight. Fancy German shaking hands, the flapper, as though he was trying to smash your fingers, and then a few days later trying to plug you. Similarly, potent, potent encounters would occur, and down the line would typify how little empathy existed between the ordinary soldiers both sides at the point, at this point in the war. Nevertheless, there were also. More effective reasons behind the willingness to indicate spontaneous short-term ceasefires. Forced in habit trenches that were long since de- deteriorated in the quagmire of mud and water, men were only happy to have drag themselves out of miserable conditions which relatively dry the ground above them. From here, they gather information of the condition and strength of many positions up opposite them, where while also undertaking much renewed repair work, and their own defence lines. More significantly, no man's land was so little, also little to do composing bodies of soldiers falling in recent British offensive and early encounters, which posed serious health risks up to both men of both sides. Even in December 1914, it was not uncommon for a brief local ceasefires to be agreed to collect and bury the dead, as World War Diary of the Second Order Regiment recalled. In the morning, the enemy in the front, A and B, C companies, trenches signalled for an officer, while we sent over for their trenches. The armies agreed upon until 4pm for the purpose of burying the dead lying between the trenches on the night of 18th of December. With no firing on either side of this day, the bodies were buried near the trenches. In the days that followed the truce, the general atmosphere to remain relaxed and relations with the enemy largely cordial. Things had changed however and orders were soon sent down the line and threatened dissimilarity action. 
should fraternisation continue. But this morning, some parts of the line remained quiet until the end of December, when the weather turned wet again, bringing rain, sleet and storms. By 30th of December 1914, it's business as usual.